CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and I've been gone for a while and now I'm back and we're going to learn how to make a show you care wear your bear mask. This was actually a um, request on my Facebook crochet page, which is Custom Comfy Crochet on Facebook. Um, yeah, and so they wanted to know if I had um, a pattern to do something like this. So I decided to create one and do it myself. Now, I have a lot of videos um, that are using uh, crochet to make crochet masks, and those are great as well. They're really good to, um, if you use a filter in them, as I show in my videos, or if you um, put them over on already like a surgical mask or something like that. Um, but since all that, things have kind of gone crazy, and now we're talking about opening schools, people are going back to work. And while this is kind of for a um, child, uh, this some adults love stuff like this as well. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. And I'm gonna show you a simple way to make a cloth um, mask. Um, and so let's go over the materials, okay? So for the bear, you're going to need um, dark brown. This is just red heart yarn for the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. And then I just used a basic white red heart for the muzzle area, and then I used gray for the skin tone of the bear. You can use any colors you want, but that's what I used. You're also going to need a crochet hook, and if you want to make a larger app bear applique for your mask, so I would say from probably like ages 10 and up would fit an adult mask, I would guess. Um, but that's totally depends on your child as well. But I used a five millimeter hook for this one, but you can go down to like a 3.5 if you need this for a toddler up to probably like a size, you know, like, um, the ages of eight or so or nine. Um, you could use a smaller hook and make a smaller applique if you have a smaller mat. What I have done for these is I have taken, now these are sold at Kroger. And I have taken, these are just your cloth masks here. Um, they're cotton, uh, fashion cotton face masks. And what I've done is, is I've doubled them, okay, because the CDC is saying that cloth masks are the best and that they um, need to be doubled. And so what I've done is I've taken two of these masks and I've doubled them and then I'm going to sew around right here and then I'm gonna sew up at the top, okay? But before I sew up at the top, I've already done the bottom here, I'm going to put my bare applique on, and then I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then you'll sew the back on to the mask just like that, and then you close it up. That way, you don't have anything showing through to the other side. Now, another thing you can do to make these cloth masks, and there's plenty of videos, and I, um, I, if you really wanna make a cloth one, you might wanna watch one of those if you think it'd be better, but this is just a no sewing machine needed um, cloth mask. But what you can do is you can take this basic shape that you see right here, outline it on a piece of paper, take an old cotton t-shirt and just draw it with a pen or a marker, cut it out, cut two of them, and then put them back to back. It is really that simple. You don't have to be a seamstress um, or know how to use a sewing machine to make one of these. But I even made it easier by just getting the masks themselves and then doubling them up and sewing them together. So what I'm gonna show you how to do on this video, and I know people hate it when I talk, so I will put a little thing in the <laughs> description box of where you can fast forward to, but I have to explain it to you. But, um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is show you how to sew right here, the front and the bottom. So what I did, and I'm doing this for people who, who just do not sew at all. Um, I, and I do so, but I wanted to get a new kit to show you guys. I got this from Hobby Lobby for like five bucks. And then I think it was even cheaper than that because it was on clearance. So I got it for like $3 and it's a cute little kit. It comes with all kinds of wonderful things in it. And it's great for if you've never, um, sewn before, but here are your, um, sewing needles and then I've got some black yarn and then there's some other colored yarn in there. So what you're gonna do, and if you already know how to sew, you can fast forward through this, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thread, you're gonna take a needle, and for this, you don't want a huge needle uh, because you don't wanna make big holes. Um, and so you just get your needle out. And just like you do if you're um, uh, using your darning needle to weave in your ends with crochet, 
you're going to do the same things. And then you bring your string down. So this would mean that it was doubled now. And then you cut the ends and then you make a knot at the very end. And I think I, I usually do about three or four times. I definitely don't want it to come undone or go through my fabric. Okay, so there's my knot. And then right under the knot, I'm going to cut. But I am going to leave a tiny bit there, just like that. Okay, so that's how you thread a needle. Let me get this stuff out of the way. And now I'm going to show you how I would sew this together. Now, this would be for um, the masks that I've bought or if you cut them out yourselves. Okay, and then I'm also going to link in the description below. The CDC has an actual um, pattern that you can go by. If you want to use that, you can. Okay, but okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here where the ear um, places begin, and that's where I'm going to start sewing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in with my needle, just like this back and forth. So I'm going to keep doing that all the way down, just like this. And I just wanted to show you how I did it. Okay, so you would keep going all the way down to this end, okay, to right here. And then I'm also going to do the same thing right in between here after I put my bare applique on, I'm going to sew these sides in so that nothing can get through because right now I did the bottom and the top, but this is still gonna be a little bit open. So I wanna make sure that those are sewn together as well. So that's how you would do it. You would just go all the way down here and to end a sewing project in case you need to know, and I'll just go ahead and end this here and I can pick it back up later is let's say this was our last stitch. I would put my needle right through that last stitch. And a lot of times you can hide these and stuff, but I'm just trying to make this as simple as I possibly can. I'm gonna go through that last stitch and I'm gonna go through my hole and make a knot, just like that. So again, I'm gonna go right through here, pulling up some of the fabric as well, and then go right through, just like that. Okay, and then you can cut off. And that's how you end, and that's how you begin um, sewing for that. And then you can do the sides here. Just making sure I would just leave these, this part over here open because this is gonna be the part that goes around the ear just like that, okay? Okay, so that's how you would do the fabric mask. And now we're gonna move on on how to do this cute bare applique for the front of any mask. And like I said, you can use any colors you want and make it so cute and original. So I'm gonna pull out my five millimeter hook and then I'm gonna pull out my gray yarn and I use these little hair things to hold my yarn in, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a magic circle. And again, if you need to know how to do these things, um, like a magic circle, go to that beginner video. Okay, so we're gonna do our magic circle And then after we do our magic circle and we pull this down, we wanna make our magic circle small so that it's easy to work into because when we leave them big, it just becomes a mess, okay? So then we're going to chain two and then we're going to put 12 double crochets in the middle of this magic circle. So one, two, three, 
and 12. That first chain of two does not count as a double crochet. Okay, so then you're going to pull your magic circle in and you're not going to go to the top of your chain of two. You're gonna go into your first double crochet. So if you need to count back, you can, that might help. So I'm gonna start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I know I need to slip stitch right into here. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to chain two again. And in the same spot right here where you just slip stitched and you did your chain of two, you're going to put two double crochets because again, that chain of two does not count as a double crochet. So there's two double crochets and you're gonna do that in each stitch around for a count of 24. So there's two double crochets again. So you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. And then we had that 22, 23, and 24, okay? And so now we're gonna count back 24 and make sure that we don't get into the top of our chain of two. So I think it's right here, so let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so we're gonna go right into that first double crochet and then we're gonna do a slip stitch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start um, getting ready to make our ears. So we're going to um, slip stitch into the first stitch. So this next stitch right here, we're going to slip stitch into. Then we're going to skip this stitch. And then in the very next stitch, we're going to do seven double crochets. So let's go right in there and do seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven double crochets. Now doing that slip stitch, skipping a stitch, and then we're going straight in and doing those double crochets that what gives this this look right here, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna go into our next stitch and we're going to slip stitch, okay? So that ends that ear. And then we're going to do three more slip stitches. One, two, and three, just like that. Now we're going to skip our next stitch and then we're gonna go into the next one and do seven double crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to skip your next stitch, and then in the next one, you're going to put a slip stitch. And that ends the ears right there, and ends this whole little bear thing. Okay, and if you can tell, this is already sticking up. You can almost see where your eyes are gonna go. It just pops out to you, it's very easy. Now what I want you to do is leave a long strand on the end of this when you go to cut off, because you're gonna use that to sew onto your mask. So I would say, you know, at least cut about a foot or a foot and a half off just to be safe. And then you're gonna end this off by pulling through, just like that, and nodding off just like that, okay? And now that you, um, now you can work in your back you'd like to. But now we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to make the face of the bear. Okay, and it's really easy. So now we're going to take our white yarn and we're going to make the muzzle. And to do that, we're going to make a magic circle again.
And we're going to pull that magic circle small so it's easy to work in. And then you're going to chain two. And just like you did for the bear, you're going to put 12 double crochets into the middle of your magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and 12. And then you're gonna pull your magic circle tight. And then just like before, you're not going to slip stitch into your chain of two. You're gonna go into your 12, your first double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I know I need to go in right here, okay? And that's really all there is to it. So I'm gonna cut off, leaving enough, again, to sew on to the front of the bear, okay? And then I'm just gonna pull through just like that, okay? So this will fit right over here. And the way I did it was, is I wanted to keep some room for the eyes. So I didn't go like, you might wanna just have the inclination to just go right over the front like that, but it leaves too much of this chin area. So if you go down just a little bit more closely to the end, then you can put your eyes right here and right here. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to work in all of our ends. And as I said before, if you're new to crochet and you don't know how, please look at that video. But for right now, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to work in all these all of these ends that we need to. So these ends right here, the ones coming out of the back, are the only ones I'm going to work in right now because we need these long ones to sew with. Okay, so um, I'll meet you back in just a minute once we get okay, this. So we've worked in all of our ends, and now we're going to sew the white muzzle onto the bear. So I'm going to take this piece that I had hanging off here and I'm going to thread it on to my darning needle. Okay. And then I'm going to take this piece right here. And as I told you before, I'm going to place it right below. So I've got this little space right here of our, um, for the 12 double crochets there in the middle, I've got that open right there at the top. And this is laying right next to the bottom, okay? And so then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right through the back of this applique. And remember, this is gonna be sewn on, so it doesn't really matter what the back looks like. And I'm just gonna sew around, going in and out of this right here. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So just like that, I've sewed it on. And then I'm gonna go right here into the back and I'm gonna work this white end so it doesn't come undone. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't go through to the front anyway where someone can see this. But I'm just gonna do three times in the back so it can be sewn in, okay? And then I can cut off. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. I've got some brown yarn here on the darning needle. And now I'm going to use this bottom part right here to guide me and how I'm going to do my mouth. So I'm gonna go, so let's just say I'm going to use these four right here. So one, two, three, and four. So then I'm gonna go right into this. I'm using my double crochets down here to guide me in making my mouth. So there's one, two, three, and four stitches. So I'm going right above the fourth and I'm pulling in my yarn and I'm leaving some in the back so it doesn't come undone and so I can sew that in later. And then I'm gonna go right over here into the middle of those four, okay, just like that. And there's one half of my mouth. And then I'm gonna come above over here and then I'm gonna come back to the middle, just like this, okay? And now we have a mouth. Then I'm going to go right into that middle part where I was at, and that's where I'm gonna go up for that little piece in between the mouth and the nose, okay? And then I'm gonna go right through the middle. 
just like this. And if you feel like it's too, like you pulled it too tight, you can always take your needle and just pull it out a little bit, just like that. Okay, so now to do the nose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same four up here to guide me in making my nose. So one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna go over here, just like this. And then I'm gonna go back to the middle. And then I'm gonna go over to this side one, two, three, and four at the top of that. And then I'm gonna go back to the middle. And then I'm going to go across the top, just like this, okay? And that gives me my little guide for where I need to sew. So now I know I need to fill all this white in. So all you're going to do is I'm going right back down to the middle and then I'm gonna go up. And I'm gonna do that again. Go to the middle and go up. In the middle, and go up. And I'm not pulling really tight. If you pull really tight when you're doing stuff like this, it can make things cave in. So I'm just kind of loosely sewing. And as you can see, you'll still see some white. And when you see that, you can just go back and fill it in as you need to. And you can use your, your needle to guide it where you need it to go. You could even leave a little bit of the white in there because it gives it kind of a highlight, um, but that's up to you. I'm not gonna leave too much in there. Okay. So I might do a little bit more, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna just leave it like that. So we've got a tiny little bit of white there and a tiny little bit of white there, but I think it looks good. Makes it look even more realistic. So now I'm gonna turn it over to the back, which kind of looks like a hot mess now, but that's okay. Because when you do appliques, you're sewing them onto something. So you can't see the back anyway. So I'm just gonna work this in the three times, and then you can cut off. Okay, and then you'll want to work this piece in as well. Now I'm going to show you how to do the eyes. So you're going to take some more of this brown and you're going to put it on your darning needle, but you're going to double the yarn for the eyes so that they stand out really well. Okay, so instead of just going down once and then leaving some hanging at the end, I'm going to go all the way down to double it and then I'm going to knot it kind of like we did when we were sewing. Well, exactly the same as we did when we were sewing. Okay, so down here at the bottom, and I'm just gonna make a knot, just like that. And then I'm gonna cut the ends. And then we're gonna start with our eyes. Now, the way that I did my eyes is I did, I did the four again. So we've got one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna put an eye right here, and then I'm gonna put an eye right here, right where the first double crochet is, and right where the fourth is. Now, if you pull this eye really tight, it's not gonna look very big. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep it pretty loose. And then I'm gonna go right over here into this spot. Okay, and there I've got my eyes. Now if I pull this really tight like that, look at that, 
It's like it doesn't even have an eye. So if that does happen to you, all you need to do is take your darning needle and pull it out. It's that easy. And then it fixes it. But now we want those to stay in place and not be too tight like that. So in the back, we need to work in our yarn. So again, I'm gonna do the three. Even though we had a knot, I still wanna make sure that this never comes undone. Okay? So then you can cut that after you work that in. And now you've got just such a cute little bare applique, okay? Really easy. And now I'm gonna show you how you would sew it on to the mask, okay? So I'm not, um, you need to work in this last little piece where we brought in that brown yarn. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I've worked that piece in in the back. And so right now I've already got this one on the front. So I'm gonna turn this over because I really wanna show you how you would sew this on, okay? So we're gonna imagine this is the front of the mask. And all you would do is you would place this on before you sew your, so remember, like I told you before, before you sew this together, okay? You're going to want to put this on because you want it to be sewn inside the mask, okay? So what you could do is you could use um, pins if it would make you feel better to keep it in the place because you want it dead center of the mask. You take the little stick stick pins and you put them all around and then you can sew around. But all you're going to do is you're going to take your darning needle, okay? And I have a smaller one. Okay, because I want, we're going through fabric now, so I wanna use a smaller darning needle. Um, and if you need to, you can also use, if you don't have a darning needle, needle that will work for this, um, and you wanna do this with fabric like I'm showing you, you could also um, take the black thread and with your regular sewing needle and do it that way, or you could take some gray yarn and put it through a sewing needle and do it that way. So it's all in, you know, what works best for you. But I'm gonna try to place that right in the middle and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go all the way around and sew this on just like this. And um, it's a little hard to get this through. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to go through the mask. So if you're working on fabric that's hard to get the yarn through, go through the mask first, like this. And then you're just gonna keep going around, all the way around the bear, going in and out, just like that. Okay, you would just keep going in and out all the way around and sew the applique on the front of the fabric mask, okay? So it turns out really good. Um, you'll see it in my thumbnail. I think it looks cute and as a button. I'm gonna wear this because I'm a crazy adult um, and I can't stand plain masks. So <laughs> this is the one, I'm gonna wear this around. Um, but yeah, so it turns out really neat. I hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, like I said, and I've said in my other videos, I'm not a professional. I am not saying this mask is perfect. I am only going by CDC guidelines and I will leave the link for CDC and all that stuff below so that you can look up on it and you can decide what's best for your family. Because right now we all have to just make the best decisions for ourselves. So I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. I have an egg, catch, egg catching apron coming out soon for all those people who have got chickens and want a crochet apron to put some eggs in. But really, you could use it for anything. Uh, it makes a great little apron, period. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's going to be my next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, please let me know. You can find me, obviously, here on YouTube. But in the description below, you will find my email. You will find my Facebook. Um and my Instagram. I was trying to think of what else. So you can message me on any of those as well or drop me a picture of your finished 
um, show you care, wear your bear mask. Um, I love to see your finished work. So yeah, please share that with me. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you can, watch an ad here or there because that helps with the cost of the materials for these free, wonderful videos for everyone to watch. So I'll see you again soon, guys. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.